Kyle Larson wins, Austin Dillon gets penalized, and the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Talladega. Plus, me and Emily debate Coke versus Pepsi, and what on earth is the last thing that you listen to on your Spotify? We're going to talk about all that and more next on this episode of the Below the Yellow Line podcast. Hello, everybody. I look like a doofus right now. As Emily can see, you can't see me, but I totally, I, I look like a crazy person, but I can hear myself a little bit better. I can't really hear anything else aside from Emily, so if a smoke detector goes off, um, that won't be good news, but welcome back to the Below the Yellow Line podcast, the podcast for me and my co-host Emily Randall about NASCAR for hours a week, three days a week, and hope somebody will listen. I am one of your hosts, Samuel Stubbs. My other host is... Host number two here, Emily. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Glad you could join us again. Emily, again, I feel I said this last Wednesday, too. I was like, okay, going to be a fairly normal Wednesday show. Recap the previous race. Preview the next race. Maybe talk oh, about no. the few little news nuggets. Is of, there action? There is action. Yeah. Austin Dillon yes. got yes, bopped. <laughs> Austin Dillon gets bopped by the NASCAR police, basically. We're, we'll talk about this a little more in depth later, but... Uh, the same penalty, basically, that Byron and Bowman got after Richmond, um, an L1 level penalty. So he loses 60 driver and owner points, five playoff points, and his crew chief, uh, Slu- is it Justin Alexander? Yeah, Justin Alexander is his name. He gets suspended for two races, and I believe it's also a $100,000 fine, or maybe $50,000, $75,000, a lot of money basically, except not for him because he's a multimillionaire. Um, we'll talk about that a little more in depth later, obviously, but I uh, just wanted to kind of get that uh, get that out there to start. Um, so again, we, d- we can't have a straightforward show on Wednesday. It, it can't happen. There's got to be breaking news. There's got to be some wacky thing that happens. But Emily... Always. Um, Always. Never we had a we had a very enthralling conversation on Monday about socks and fast food. But uh, what are, what are your life updates or rhetorical questions or, or anything like that uh, for everybody today? It is hard for me to think about anything other than food. Oh, I don't blame you. But so food question again. But I got a question for our audience, not our readers, not our listeners, our <laughs> audience. I'm gonna start calling them that so I there don't screw up. That that encapsulates um, it all. Coke or Pepsi? What was it? Coke or Pepsi. Coke or Pepsi. Oh. Well, I know where you are with debate. this. Listen, where am I? Where do you think I am? Coke, obviously. But Unless you know I love question. me some Dr. Pepper, which yeah. is not in the same category as Coke and Pepsi. No. But I feel like it's closer to Pepsi than it is to Coke. I, I um, would agree with that. Yeah. Just as far as the flavor palette goes. Coke has just like got the slightly more acidic. Yes, feel I agree to with it, that. Yeah. Which I love, and it's like sharp. And I love a good pre mixed cherry Coke. I don't want the added cherry. Like if you go to Sonic, no, just give me a regular Coke. I don't want mm. the little party stuff in. Listen, if you go to like a good old down home dairy bar, mm-hmm. give me, give me a good old cherry Coke or cherry vanilla, pepper, mm. and I'm down. Yeah, that's true. So, it's just, it's a, it's a great debate. It is. I, I do agree. Dr. Pepper is more like Pepsi. I, this may just be me, um, and you may be used to it by now that you don't even notice it. Um, does mm-hmm. Coke, after you drink one, give your teeth, like, a weird feeling? Like, almost like they're coated in something? Maybe that's the acidity, but. Yeah, I think it's the acidity. Okay. I feel like I'm just immune to it at this point, probably. I, probably so. 
I would assume. Because it always does that to me. Like, Dr. Pepper doesn't do it, Pepsi doesn't do it, no other anything does it. It's only, like, Coca-Cola, specifically, mm -hmm. and, and like, the, the knockoffs of Coca-Cola that basically taste the same. Like, RC and, and, and all those, you know, they, they do the same thing, I assume, because they're That's made up almost colas. the same. Yeah. Um, I assume because they're also, I mean, just made like that. You know, it's just like the thought, like some people go to a restaurant and they're like, hey, can I get a Coke? And people are like, we have Pepsi, is that okay? And they're like, no. But like for me, I'm like, sure, yeah, like, I yeah, don't care. Absolutely. I'm fine with it. I mean, yeah. I'm not that judgy, just give me the me sugar. Neither. So Yeah, that's how I am. No, I don't want diet. I yeah, di eh, I'm okay with diet, I guess. Diet Coke is weird. Well, I mean, diet drinks, are, they're they're not as bad for you, I guess, technically, as the, the, the hard stuff, I mm -hmm. guess. It just but, depends what you're looking at. Yeah, it, like, to me, Diet Dr. Pepper tastes very similar to regular Dr. Pepper. If somebody gave me a Diet Dr. Pepper, I would happily drink it. Diet Coke, it's okay, but it's just, it's not the same thing. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That that is that's been a debate going on since like the eighteen eight. Well, not since the eighteen eighties. I mean, you know, Coke started out as as something to get a war veteran off of morphine, not as an international brand. But um, anyway, that that's been a raging debate for a while. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That's it's pretty interesting. Um, my yeah, question. So what are your thoughts this week? Is well, I see. I'm I'm team Coke, I guess, but I'm fine with Pepsi. Either one's good. I'm a, I, I'm also a weird guy. I'd be fine if you gave me an off-brand thing. Like, I don't care, honestly. If you give me yeah. Dr. Thunder, Pib, that's okay. Pib I mean, is I, good, but Pib Dr. Is, Thunder's like I it. love Pib. It's not as fizzy to me. It's not. No, it's it's slightly it's slightly more flat, I, I guess, mm -hmm. like, already. Um, yeah, I'm Team Coke, but, you know, Coke's also, I read this the other day, and it, I think it was from the New York Times, so I think it's pretty trustworthy, that along with OK... And LOL, Coke is uh, in the top three, Coca-Cola, rather, is in the top three most understood sayings in the world in English. Like, you could go to a very remote wow. place, say Coca-Cola, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, Coca-Cola, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then funny. you could say, you know, something that we in America say, like, all the time, they'd be like, huh? But they know Coca-Cola. So, that just shows the reach that it has. Um, my random thought of the day, and I want you to answer this too, Emily, is um, what is the last song, podcast, what is the last thing when you go into your music app, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, whatever, what is the last song, podcast, whatever you have playing? And if it's below the L line, you are a real one. If it's not, hey, that's okay. You know, we all got to take a step back from the great things sometimes to appreciate the simpler things. But, um, what is the last thing, I mean, you don't have to, like, know off the top of your head. You can look, but Emily, what is the last song, podcast, whatever that you had playing in your, like, your main music app? Oh, I know. You, I don't have to look. Taylor I, Swift. Um, yes, it was. I'm a yeah. debut girly right now. You know, probably don't know what that means, but I don't her know. debut album. Um, go working through the eras. Mm. Um, recently attended the eras tour. I'm a Swifty. Um. <laughs> So I've been listening to debut this week, and today I am like super obsessed with Invisible. So it's good. It's a it's a jam. It's a old school jam for Taylor Swift, but it's a jam. So you should listen to it if you haven't heard it. Oh yeah, I'll get I'll get right on that. Yeah, you'll get right on that. Yeah, I don't. So, I, I actually like some for older stuff. I just I mean I'm not a I'm yeah. not a pop fan. Yeah. At least not modern modern stuff. It just doesn't doesn't really do it for me. I get it. We all like different stuff, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did check. I, I You know, I, I record these through my microphone with my phone, so I'm not going to go and, and hij hijack the recording for to look at this. Um, I already know, actually. And uh, the last the last podcast I had playing, it was a, a National Treasure podcast because I'm, like, extremely way too obsessed with two random Disney movies starting to cage in the mid-2000s. But the last song that I had playing um, – was digging up bones by Randy Travis, which Emily's dad notoriously hates. I'm not sure exactly why, um, but that was the last song that I had playing. Um, and then Probably it was actually. Oh, I'm like, sure. For I'm ten sure. years straight as children, so. Yeah. That would probably be why. So, I paused it like halfway apparently. So I, I guess I don't know when I was walking or whatever I was doing this morning. That's the last song I was listening to. Um, 
on mine. So put yours in the comments or chat or you know what whatever uh, it is. Um, and again, if it's below the O line, hey, hats off to you. If it's not, that's okay. You know you can't listen to the greatest podcast ever made all the time. I get that. Uh, let's actually talk about NASCAR for just a little bit. I promise. You know, you know this is a NASCAR show um, slightly. Um, so let's start with, actually, no, you know what, let's take a commercial break first, let's take a short commercial break, um, I th let's put the Emily KF, let's put Emily's KFC ad in there, we'll take our first commercial break, come back, and then we will talk about Austin Dillon and his penalty. All right, moving on now, Austin Dillon got bopped, um... An L1 penalty, like I said at the top of the show, 60 points, 5 playoff points. That's 60 owner and driver points reducted. Uh, fine, I believe, of $75,000. And his crew chief, Justin Alexander, was suspended for two races. So for Talladega and Dover, Austin Dillon will not have his crew chief on the box. This season goes from bad to worse. Emily, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on this whole situation? How detrimental do you think this is to Austin Dillon? He wasn't having a great year. But he goes down from 21st to 29th in points. Goes from right around the bubble to kind of out of it now. So what do you think uh, the effect will be uh, on him and his team? I mean, th this is huge. And what, I mean, to not have your crew chief at Dega is, like, insane. Um, so, obviously, like, big bummer for him. And when you're already probably feeling down from your season, that's hard. Um do you feel like NASCAR has been like insanely strict on uh, penalties this year? Because I just yeah. feel like every single time we talk, there are penalties and penalties. So I feel like that's frustrating for I agree. everyone. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's as much them being as strict as it is as much of them. Their eyes kind of got opened. Last year, I think there was only two or three penalties, like major penalties, L1, L2 violations throughout the entire season, throughout nine months of competition. So far this year, we have had now three of these major penalties through nine weeks. We are a quarter of the way through the season, and we've already matched our total, I believe, from last year. And I may, I may be wrong on both those counts. Um, but I think once Hendrick got penalized, and then I think them kind of getting off scot-free, that opened the door for everybody to kind of start realizing, okay, maybe we can get away in this gray area. Then Hendrick got penalized again. And so people maybe realize, okay, maybe we need to back off. Um, and so now with this penalty, I, I, I think it was, I can't remember exactly what it said. Um, let me try to find the NASCAR.com article on it and see exactly what the violation was. It, it wasn't a part that I, that's commonly talked about. Um, let's see here. But I, I agree, Emily. I think... Maybe it might not be so much that they're being more strict. I think it may be just that they're noticing, not necessarily noticing them more, but their eyes are open more to the possibilities of stuff like this happening. Um, yeah, what, what do you think? Do you think they're more strict, or do you think it's just kind of kind of a cause and effect deal? I don't know. I mean, it's just, like, I never remember hearing about penalties like this. Like, it just feels so abnormally frequent yeah and they, i mean nascar made sure the teams knew last year that if you modify a part of the next gen car you know it's only year two of this and but they don't really have an excuse to be like yeah we didn't know now because nascar's already penalized plenty of people um oh yeah but still it's i mean i agree i think they're just maybe they are being more strict maybe they are being more stringent because the teams don't have that grace period um and no, I was I was wrong again. The the crew chief of the three is actually Keith Rodden. He's had like three crew chiefs in the last three or four years, and I just I get confused. So Keith Rodden uh, was suspended, and he was the one fined seventy five thousand um, dollars. And also there was a uh, let's see, a couple of penalties on the seventy eight team. Um, NASCAR suspended the rear tire changer and the jack man of the seventy eight. Uh, that was Anthony Alfredo this weekend at Martinsville. Remember, he lost the tire that brought out the second-to-last caution. Um, and then they also fined three Xfinity crew chiefs $5,000 for lug nut violations. Taking that straight off NASCAR.com. 
Let's go through the Martinsville results here, Emily. It was a nearly a great day for Denny Hamlin. Ended up being the best day for Kyle Larson. Gets his first Martinsville win. Gets his second win on the season, both, incidentally, at Virginia Short Tracks. Two wins for him in the last three weeks. He gets the win. Joey Logano brings home the runner-up finish. Martin Truex, after running 30th all day, ends up third. Denny Hamlin in fourth. What did you think about Denny's day? It seemed like he might be running away from the field. What a cycle out to second after those green flag pit stops. What did you think about Denny Hamlin's day, yes, or not yesterday, Sunday at Martinsville? I mean, there was just so much hope at times. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it's like you want to be like, yes, it was a great race. But also it's like you have that twinge of disappointment because <laughs> he could have won. Yeah. It looked like everything was going to pan out for Denny. His first top five of the season, actually. Longest he's ever gone in his career. Tied with his rookie year of 06 for uh, not having a top 10. Um Chase Briscoe finished fifth with a broken middle finger. He had surgery, successful surgery uh, on that on Monday. Eric Amarola, sixth. It was a great day for Stuart Haas Racing. Uh, I mean, two of their cards outside the top ten, you might not know it, but Ryan Preece, who fended, uh, only made his way back up to 15th, led the first 135 laps, dominated, won the pole, and then got a speeding penalty and ruined his day because it was that hard to pass. Blaney in 7th, Stenhouse in 8th, Bubba in ninth. Chase Elliott in his return finishes 10th. What did you think about his day, Emily? We, we, we thought good race for him would be top 15, top 20, but he just outclassed us both and got a top 10. Yeah, I mean, definitely impressive to come back from being out for so long and to be doing that great. It's just on, on point and just on par for how great of a racer Chase Elliott really is. Yeah, going back to Dega, a place where he won last fall. Looking to get that first win of the year. It's going to be hard to do it, but uh, hopefully he can. Hopefully his endurance gets a little better, too. I noticed he was pretty tired after the race, but it makes sense. I mean, Martinsville is not the easiest track on your left leg where you have to break 800 times plus. Um, Alex Bowman, 11th. Austin Dillon at 12th. Ross Chastain, 13th. Busher, 14th. Ryan Priest, 15th. The driver of the day for the first stage and a half, and it just didn't pan out. Went to the back and couldn't make up spots. Christopher Bell in 16th, Daniel Suarez in 17th. 17th is actually the best finish for Daniel Suarez uh, in the past six races. So that 99 team's got to get some stuff figured out. Ty Gibbs in 18th breaks his top 10 streak. Michael McDowell at 19th. Kevin Harvick in 20th. He would have cycled out to the lead, Emily, after the green flag pit stops. Would have been around 5th or 6th on the final restart, but a loose wheel cost him his good run. He ends up in 20th place. Didn't have to carry Stuart Haas Racing all on his own, so his back shouldn't be too sore this week. Um... Bad day for Kyle Busch in 21st. Poor day for Reddick as well in 22nd. Byron 23rd. Kozlowski 24th. Todd Gilland ran so, so well. Only ends up in 25th place. Got up as high as 2nd. Coming to the end of stage number 2. You have LaJoy in 26th. Almendinger 27th. Haley 28th. Harrison Burton 29th. Noah Gregson 30th. Eric Jones 31st. Legacy Motor Club continues their terrible start. As does Ty Dillon finishing 32nd. Austin Sindrick, um, I don't know what happened, but it was pretty terrible. He ends up 33rd. Zane Smith, Truck Series regular uh, defending truck champ, ends up 34th. Anthony Alfredo, Fast Pasta, wasn't very fast, 35th. And J.J. Yaley ends up 36th. Any, oh, gosh, sorry. Anybody on the uh, on the results sheet, Emily, that you're really impressed with how well they ran? Anybody that you're a little disappointed uh, in their performance on Sunday at Martinsville? I mean, check out J.J. Yaley in the top 40, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> top 40 no, finish is I pretty mean, good when there's only 36 cards out there. <laughs> right? Right? I was impressed. So, that, that's my thoughts. <laughs> good for J.J. Yaley. We're going to take our, let's see, second break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the point standings, and then we will preview the biggest, baddest speedway in NASCAR, Talladega, coming up this weekend. All right, time for point standings now. But before we do that, there are a few little uh, news and nuggets I do um, want to mention. Um, I think my dog just barked. I apologize for that. That's some background noise that we don't love. Um, but first of all, um, NASCAR is committing to trying to be carbon neutral by 2035. 
Um, yep, that's my dog. Uh, trying to be carbon neutral by 2035. Um, this does not mean that it's going electric. I've seen response to, I've seen comments and, and all that stuff. Um, a response to all that. And people are freaking out. They say, oh no, NASCAR is going electric. I'm not going to watch. And, you know, they'll be back Sunday watching Talladega, I'm sure. Um, but oh, no, they're they're not going electric. Um, not even close to that. <laughs> the Cup Series will not be electric. I've never seen an electric car go that fast. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, charging will be interesting, but uh, the the Cup Series is not going electric it's for the, the twenty or thirty years at least. Stage, stage the extra long charging. stage break. There is though likely within the next year or so going to be like an electric exhibition series just to kind of test out the concept, run five or six races uh, with that. But no, NASCAR is not going electric. They're just trying to do their part, help out the environment, you know, with, with climate change and everything. And no, we're not going to start that discussion, but. Um, you know, just trying to do their part, and I appreciate that. You know, it's not a sport that I think obviously would necessarily be known for trying to have a positive environmental impact, but they've shown they can do that, you know, with different types of fuel and, and trying to uh, to limit, I guess, uh, the negative impact that I guess they have um, environmentally. But, no, just, um, just being con conscious about that kind of thing is a, a great step in the right direction, and to see them act on it is... It's great. Exactly, think, especially about that. especially if they're trying to draw on a younger generation of fans, and, you know, my generation of fans. That'll help. Um, that'll help. Second news nugget here is something that, as uh, as an admirer, I guess, as a uh, unofficial historian and geek about the space program that I really love. NASCAR is joining Lidos, who is, I believe. Maybe an internet search engine or, or something. So I don't know what they are. They sponsor 2311 Racing. They sponsor Bubba. They sponsor Christopher Bell, I believe. They sponsored a few people. They are partnering with NASCAR for a lunar rover. So NASCAR might be going to the moon, basically. So what? that's pretty cool. Um, 2024, okay. Bush Clash on the moon. Hey, why not? Um, <laughs> that's basically what Southern California feels like to a lot of NASCAR fans being as far away as the moon. Um, but yeah, so NASCAR may be going to the moon. So that's pretty neat. Um, let's actually get on to the point standings here and then we'll preview Talladega. Christopher Bell still leads the points, but only by five over Ross Chastain. Playoff wise though, Bell is locked into the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs along with Kyle Larson, Tyler Reddick, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse, and William Byron. Seven winners through nine races. The two, um... Guys that have won multiple races are William Byron and Kyle Larson. Ross Chastain currently the first guy in on points, plus 97. Kevin Harvick, plus 87. Truex, plus 66. Uh, Denny, plus 47. What do you think about his points standing, Emily? What, you know, plus 47. He gained 26 points uh, week to yeah. week. So, solid showing at Martinsville really helped him. I feel confident that if he continues to make good progress, that will be okay. Um... But, you know, he's still not not in that position where I am comfortable <laughs> yet. Not going to be comfortable until he's locked in? Yeah, I need him to lock in. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Just because, I mean, anything can happen. We could have 16, it, 17 it winners. It is nerve-wracking. Um, or you could, you could wreck and be out, and suddenly, like, your points are just crap, you know? Yeah. Ryan Blaney, oh. plus 41. Alex Bowman, plus... Tw uh, sorry, not 27, 37. So uh, he would be tied with Chastain, plus 37, second in the points, if not for that 60-point penalty. Um, you know, which just really makes me happy to be able to report that information as a Bowman fan. Brad Keselowski, plus 35. Plus 10 is Chase Briscoe, who gets in the playoffs with a solid run at Martinsville. Uh, and then plus 6, last guy in, as he basically, it seems like he's been all year, Chris Busher, plus 6. First guy, or first two guys out, both, uh, 6 points out, Suarez and McDowell. Sindrick, 9 out, Gibbs, 13 out. Rounding out the top 20 is, or wait, Gibbs rounds out the top 20. And then at Bubba, Corey LaJoy, Gillen, they all move up with Austin Dillon going down to 29th. Uh, so it's uh, Bubba, LaJoy, Gillen, Haley, Almendinger. That's the top 25. Almarola, Priest, Jones, and then Dillon, 29th. Harrison Burton in 30th. Noah Gregson, 31st. Chase Elliott, 130 points out. Likely going to have to win to make it in the playoffs. We're going to take, uh, well, no, actually, hang on. I'm a Chevy guy. Got to look at the manufacturer standings. Chevy leads Toyota by 29 and Ford by 39 for 10 back at Toyota. Got a report on that. Emily, 
Anybody on the points list right now really impressing you with how well they've done this year? Anybody kind of not depressing you, but disappointing you with uh, with how really just not high up they are on that list or, or anything like that? Um, based off of you know race results, obviously, like it's all it's all expected. But um, I don't know. I feel like there's some like random guys up there in the standings. Random in my mind, just which pretty much means they're not a superstar. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say Kozlowski being up there is a little bit of a surprise. I mean, he's a cup champ, but with how bad yeah, they were he last year. It doesn't necessarily surprise me. It doesn't? I mean, no, I love me some Brad. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be too surprised except for the fact that they were terrible last year. But, I mean, you know, yeah, he's sure. a cup champ for a reason. I mean, he's had a nice yeah. bounce back year. Um, and Chris Busher as well, just kind of been silently around yeah. that cutoff line. Yeah, no, see, Chris Busher is like one of those, like, not a superstar guys to me, but like, okay. So it's like, yeah. it's kind of in the middle. me for him to be up there. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of been flirting with that line for a while. He just, he hasn't made the playoffs aside from 2016 where he got that, that fog shortened wind at Pocono. But, um, looking to make the playoffs here for the second time in his career, and he may just do it. So we're going to take our last commercial break, come back, and preview Talladega Super Speedway. All right, time to preview Talladega. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter preview. We'll have a full preview out episode on Friday. Going to Talladega, no practice for Super Speedways uh, in the top three series of NASCAR, at least this season. Weekend schedule-wise, there's really only qualifying to talk about. Uh, qualifying will be, let's see, uh, that's Friday. Saturday, qualifying will be... 10.30 Eastern on FS1 MRN Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. The race is at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox MRN and Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Pre-race on Sunday starts at 1.30 on FS1 and then 2 o'clock on MRN and, at 2 o'clock on MRN and Fox as well. Tony Stewart will be in the Fox booth for the third or fourth time this season. Last year in the spring, Ross Chastain won Talladega. Last year in the fall, Chase Elliott one Talladega. So again, we're not going to do a full preview right now because we'll have that episode out on Friday and we'll have a YouTube pre-race show. Spotter stand, go check it out. Um, but Emily, uh, who is your pick to win the poll, to lead the field to green on Sunday for the Geico 500 at Talladega? Okay, so this is it, my official pick. Yes. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you who I'm going back and forth between. Can we tell you? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's either going to be Denny Hamlin, Okay. Obviously. Shocking. Joey Logano. Okay. Or Chase Elliott. Mm. Okay. Mm. I feel like, obviously, if you're not going to let me pick Denny, then between the two, I'm going to go Joey just because I'm not sure Chase is there yet, but he could totally shock and come out and win this thing. Okay. So, let's go Joey. Go with Joey Logano. And you know, you always, you always say, you always say pull and win. Listen, I just go, go big or go home. My picks are the same. You're going, you're going for Logano for the pole and the win. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to do it. He's yeah, go job. big or go home. Um, right. I don't necessarily have any statistics or any reasoning to back this up, but I think Chase Briscoe is going to win the pole. Um, he's been really fast the last couple of weeks. We'll see how that speed translates to the big track. But I'm going to go Briscoe to win the pole. But uh, we're going about to do something very rare, Emily. We are about to agree on a pick. I'm going to go really? Joey Logano to win. Um in the three super speedway drafting style races this year, he won his Daytona duel. He was second in the Daytona 500. He might win that thing if the caution doesn't come out in turn one. And then he won at Atlanta. So first, okay. second, first. An average finish under two, I think like 1.33 or something insane like that. Um, so give me Joey Lowe. He's a Taldega winner, multiple time Taldega winner. He's won at every super speedway now with his win at Atlanta. So give me... Um, Give me Logano. Um, obviously, Bubba, Denny, Blaney, all good Super Speedway racers. Um, Hendrick's gotten better with their Super Speedway program. Um, Eric Amarola, Eric John. I mean, anybody can win at Talladega, really. Uh, but look out for the RFK cars, because Lowski and Busher, they uh, really fast at Daytona. And Kyle Busch, really fast at Daytona. So, uh, any final thoughts here, Emily? Going to Talladega, Martinsville week uh, over. Um, I'm just excited to see what will probably be like a kick butt race yeah gonna be a lot of fun love this kind of races 
going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for joining us today on Below the O-Line. A preview episode out on Friday and videos, all week YouTube videos on the Spotter Stand YouTube page. Go to YouTube or just go on Google uh, the Spotter apostrophe S stand for all uh, for all your NASCAR coverage, news, and notes on the top three series of NASCAR racing. Thank you for listening. I am Sam with Subs. That is Emily. Uh, appreciate y'all listening to the show again. Emily, thank you for being here, and we will see you on Friday to preview this year's Geico 500. We'll see you later. Rate, follow, like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff, and goodbye.